Hi, everybody. Yay! Yay! Oh, my gosh. You guys, thank you so much for showing up to, like, the late night. Yeah. Well, this is the late night for me because I'm old. But, like, I don't know if it's late night for any of the rest of you. I know Basic you have, quest yo, after hours. That's right. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah? Okay, that's podcast number two. Yeah, yeah. I'm for gonna, sure. That, that's going to be me and Jasmine. Okay. Because <laughs> that's a whole guess, different vibe. I guess. <laughs> You guys, you, well, I you guess I just got cut from the no. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, because you've got the tea kettle. The tea kettle is your baby. Okay, all right. I'm just filling in for Omar. I'm just no. I'm not you're a... more than fill, you're an upgrade, frankly. Oh. Let's be honest. Come um, on. We beat up on Omar because it's fun, but uh, and but also we he's just so lovely, and you he's can't... the sweetest thing on the planet. Yes, like. I, I don't even, he's such a Muppet, like the, the most delicious sweetheart. He's a Muppet. And he's not a Muppet, Muppet in like the British term where it kind of me, means like, because he's also Wait, what is the British wicked term of, smart. What's the British term of Muppet? A Muppet, Muppet is kind means. of, at least in my experience, a Muppet is a little bit of someone like, oh God, they're such a Muppet. Like they're like, so not, they're just, just not smart. A Muppet is an idiot. It's an idiot. Okay. Yeah, okay. You, I didn't you want to say it in a nice use that way. Word. I didn't want yeah. to use the word, but we went there. So there we're going. And now apparently I have a different yeah. accent too. I don't should know I, why. Should I introduce the We podcast? should because there are so many people who are, are going to be listening to this and not in this room and yeah. have no idea what's going on. Right. So. Okay. So welcome. This is the Tea Kettle Podcast live at PAX Unplugged. Give them. have to describe to those <laughs> listeners at home, Anjali running up and down the aisles, kind of exposing herself. Not exactly. I'm wearing a uh, high neck sweater. I may just be shoving my bosom into people's faces okay. because it has a microphone attached to it. Yeah, nobody seems too upset, so I think I, we're doing fine. Uh, so, Anand! Oh, hey. We have a superstar in the room. You guys, So look give back there. We'll start with this. Anand Shah is one of our executive producers. He's the one executive producer you don't see on the show. I know. <laughs> Everybody and I else is on I, the show. I feel like, can we like next season? Yeah, I said next season. It's going to happen, I okay. swear. Okay. I, I, I said it, therefore it must happen. Not only did you hear, hear first, I just heard it here first. Yeah, so, no. Congratulations. When I want something, I get something, and so we're having a second season. And apparently I'm a okay. childish British wine. Mm -hmm. Um But uh, I hope in the second season we can drag on and on for a little guest part. Okay. I mean, does Anand want that? <laughs> Should we ask him? Is he Do you want that? Is he going to speak to me? I'm so, I'm scared now. He's like, uh, I, he's like, no, please stop talking to me and leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> I want less attention. Less attention. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Um, but we are so happy that he is here because yes. we don't get to see him as much because we're all on the West Coast. That's right. So this is very fun to be over here on the East Coast hanging with all of you. Very exciting. Um, thank you not only for being here present, but thank you for supporting the show. How we many backers do we have in this audience? Amazing. Okay. That's all, all the hands. By the way, audience at home, they're raising their hands. That's why you couldn't hear yeah, them. That's it like, was a lot. Yes, so okay, many hands, you guys. So many hands. There, so are like, hands. there are like a good 850 people in this room. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Okay. okay. That was... Why do we not have video? Now this is an explicit show. No, at this it's point. not. The first not. time you're allowed... But the second one, you're in Come trouble. Come on, I just want people to be heard. Yeah. Let the voices ring out. It feels like 850 people. It does. And that's what matters. And but we yes. feel the love from the community that you guys have created surrounding this oh my gosh. show and this game is so incredible. And especially since the launch. Yeah. Um, I, I we, feel, I never felt so supported doing a show. I mean, like, usually you do a show. I mean, I haven't done a lot of crowdfunding in the past. So this was my first crowdfunding effort, period. But I think also because of the, the goals, the mission of this show in particular, right? It was especially support. Like, not only were you obviously supported by people, but I think people really got behind the concept of like, hey, I want to see, you know, uh, brown people representing themselves around the table as the stars of a show mm -hmm. um, and living in a mythos that is, uh, you know, our, like fr from the, the mythology that we grew up with. And, and I, I could feel that coming through yeah. uh, the, the, the internet screens. It was really palpable in a way that I, I didn't expect. It was really moving. So thank you, everybody here who supported yeah. everybody at home. We supported so much. It, uh, 
was, it brought me to tears uh, many, many times. And I'm one of those guys that's like, oh, I should never cry because that makes me feel weak. But then I did a lot. Usually it's because I beat him up. That's usually yeah. why he's crying. Yeah, so it was really wonderful. Um, no, you are such a, are you, I'm very excited. And without spoiling anything, there is a, a gorgeous scene that Sandeep has in upcoming episode, in, in an upcoming episode, um, that I, I, you know, I know you from working with you on set, on, uh, what did we change the name to? Wizard School Wizard Dropout? Wizard School Dropout, yeah. Um, so, and I know you both, you and Anand both from there, and so I know you as this comedy guy. I know you as a mm -hmm. super fun comedy guy. And to see the vulnerability that comes out from someone the first time you get to see it, and the first time you get to, see, you now I'm doing it. The first time you get to see that vulnerability underneath all of that is, is just breathtaking. And I'm so excited about that scene. It's, it's a really special one. It's such a function of, I mean, I think the TTRPG format really lends itself well to that, I, yeah. which I didn't fully appreciate. Um, I mean, obviously I'd, I'd seen enough of it and I was like, I wonder if I'll go there because I am, my, my crutch is, uh, comedy. Yeah. yeah, it's like, it's... This it's, is apparently it's, the international yeah, symbol that, everybody for comedy. Everybody dances with their yeah. elbows when they do comedy, Shaking right? To the left and the right. Um, yeah, and so like, it, I, listen, I was born and raised in New Hampshire. <laughs> I was the one, right, exactly, that chuckles me never, like exactly how I felt the entire time, um, was, you know, it's, I was the only brown dude within a thousand miles, it felt like. And, and so to build a tough skin, it was like, oh, you just crack jokes about everything. You know, you kind of like, that's the way you you sort of kung fu away anything that would sort of approach uh, you know your heart you know mm -hmm. uh, in a hurtful way. Um, and if you could do that, then it showed you owned it, and then you and then people were more comfortable around you as a result. And so then it lessened any of those blows, and it made it feel like oh you 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 can you can razz on each other, you can chum with mm -hmm. each other. And so that's I think you know has always been my go to. So now doing this show. Um, uh, not around, um, you know, pr predominantly white people or people that aren't Indian or South Asian. It was a different. It was. It was just a different mm -hmm. uh, experience. Obviously, I felt like I was uh, exposed in a way that I hadn't, sure. you know, sort of expected. Yeah, um, I, I think yeah. also, like you were saying, though, specifically this genre of entertainment, the the TTRPG actual play whether it's live or whether it's recorded, it, it, one of the things, one of the nine gazillion things I love about it is that it allows you to have the highs and the lows of life and really explore all of that. And it's such a constant reminder that even in life, you can be laughing your ass off one minute and then something can completely shift that. And then, and then fucking you can Luis go right Carrazzo back. comes in. And then Luis Carrazzo comes and in. Says, and three and sentences and you're fucking weeping. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and all the girls are like, hi. Uh. <laughs> and he's like, I'm gay. And sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm not, you're not my type, but I'm a lovely human being. <laughs> we love Luis so, so much. Oh, he's my just, God. He's so, oh, what a lovely human. But, but I, obviously, everyone who is here, I, I am assuming, has had some experience with TTRPGs, but maybe not everybody who's listening has. And I, I hope that everyone who is listening takes at least one chance to play some kind of tabletop role-playing game to put yourself into that experience with a room full of friends, a mm. room full of fun people who care about you and love you and want you to succeed, whatever that looks like. Mm. Because, I, so, okay, this is, this is, this is one reason. This is another reason Something's I love happening. TTRPGs. Okay, so, so, <clears throat> how do I... How do I say this without sounding like a douche? Um, I just use the. I don't even know if I'm supposed to say that word anymore. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm an we'll old Indian woman. I'm allowed to say anything. We'll, we'll bleep douche. You can bleep that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. But I, I, so I was in London and I was at the Critical Role live play there at Wembley, and I realized oh I was talking. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I was ta but I was talking with Matt before the show, and and they were all a little nervous, understandably. But what I realized in that moment is that I had seen musicians play there because of Rick. I had seen, um, Rick is my husband, and yes, I'm gonna brag about him. He's a musician, he's played Wembley, aha, the end. Um, I didn't know that school. Yeah, he's twice. Um, Sick. But, uh, so I've seen musicians play there. I've seen uh, sports matches there. But to see a, one of these live plays there is a completely unique situation because when people are playing sports or when musicians are there, there is always someone in the audience who is not looking for them to fail, 
but if they don't make the goal or don't make, you know, if something goes wrong, they are ready to jump on them. Mm. When someone rolls a natural one yeah. in a TTRPG, right. You're People excited. are excited yeah. and yeah, supportive. Yeah. There's no family. Like you'll not hear the aw, but they're but it's not at you. It's not at the player. Right, it's, right. It's for the character, and then you're excited to see where the story goes. Yeah. And it's fun. And if they're laughing, if the audience is laughing, or if the people are playing, you're playing with, they're laughing, they're laughing with you at yeah. the thing because you're not there to win. Hey, so sorry to interrupt, but the rest of this episode is for our Patreon subscribers only. So if you'd like to hear the rest of this juicy conversation, let me tell you, it gets juicy. There's another 15 minutes, 50, five zero of this conversation over at patreon.com slash Thank you so much for supporting the show.